Welcome to Voices Section 2. I'm your host, Ari Danica, and this is a weekly look into the EVE Online metagame. Only a small portion of the podcast, Voices from the Void, available at VoicesFromTheVoid.net. Link is available in the description, and you should check it out. But before you do that, let's get into some news. All right, so I'm Ari Danica. I am part of AMUC, which is in the Goon Swarm Federation, and I run a podcast called Voices from the Void. We do a Section 2 news feature, and I thought, why the hell not? Vlogs are a thing. I'll do a vlog. It can't be that hard. That's wrong. It is very hard. I've tried to start this vlog for about an hour now, and I'm at the point where I'm like, screw it. Let's just get this done. So, let's get into this whole metagame news thing. First up, trickery, oh, also, I do have notes, so I will be looking down at them ever so often. Sue me, there's a lot of information here. So, first up, trickery, deceit, and ponies in low sec. And what happened here is, I believe it was on the 20th, which was this past Friday, Snuffbox, after getting some success fighting a Raiden cruiser gang and a Solar Fleet Drake gang, they got a bat phone from X-13, who are recent um, Raiden Dot expatriates. X-13 proposed they join forces against Team Cloud-7, which consists of Cloud-7 as well as EVE Tech Union. Being the classy pilots they are, it couldn't just be, let's go fight them. It had to be a production. It had to be a thing. So what they did is they staged a fake fight between the two of them going as far as to sacrifice and abaddon in order to really sell it to t- Team Cloud 7. They took the bait, they being Team Cloud 7. They committed their forces, which was about 40 to 50 armor tanked uh, battleships and battle cruisers, along with some guardians. I think there were about five or six on the kill mill, and one triage archon in what they thought would be a three way between Snuffbox. Snuffbox's uh, 20-man battleship fleet, along with a few command ships, and X-13's uh, 10-man battleship fleet that had a triage and a couple that had a triage Thanny and a couple of Balgorns. Fast forward to the end, they uh, Team Cloud Seven got slaughtered, <laughs> and it was, it seemed to be a pretty amazing fight. I haven't found any video footage of it yet. But there is a great fell heap challenge uh, battle report of all of this. Um, Eve Union lost two revelations, one self-destructed. One actually stopped the self-destruct sequence and went down with E-Honor. And there was also the loss of a um, Eve Union Archon, along with the vast majority of the subcap fleet. So uh, there will be links of both the fell heap challenge uh, battle report and the kill board, so definitely check that out. Next story up, PL downs two RA Titans in NOL Tech M9, and uh, in exchange for four dreads, 30 battleships, and 10 tackle on Pandemic Legion side, they took down two Titans and five carriers from Red Alliance. So good job, guys. There are several videos um, about this fight. I will be linking the one that shows the raw footage as well as the PL battle report. Uh, Earlier this week, Raiden had a severe line of bad luck. Starting off in low sec, they lost a Nyx and an Aeon to Shadow Cartel and Stop Exploding You Cowards. There's a nice video on this hosted by Helicity Boson over on Machine9.net. And there's also a battle report. The very next day, they ended up losing to they ended up losing six more super caps to a combined force of CFC and Ewok and Evoke of all people. Now the great thing about this is that none other than Darius Three um, has never gotten along with the goons very well. Was the one to bat phone about this raid in Dot Fleet. And again, the world is ending. <laughs> Ewoks and Evokes and CFC working together. It's I'm I I, I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. The metagame it never ceases to surprise. Uh, and following with CFC news, the Vino campaign is over. There's a little bit of um, uh, people aren't agreeing how this ended. There's a very strange um, clip from forums on Kagutsman. And it shows uh, 
Kesmanis, who's a drill CEO, saying some very questionable things. Um, NC Dot did get quite a few of their tech moons taken away, but in this little clip of a forum post, he's saying that you know the CFC surrendered and there was a soft war going on, which it's venal and it's in PC space, so that really doesn't make sense. There's a lot of weird stuff in this post. I'm going to link it for you. You take a look. Make your own choices. Um, with the Vino campaign being over, AAA has moved back down south. I, I really didn't interact with them much. <laughs> I did die to quite a few people, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's all over, and it looks like there's a little bit of peace in the north, just in time for some activities that we'll cover in the uh, community segment. Bernjina Hulk again. Mm, it's going to be fun. Uh, in our last piece of metagame news, PL, it seems like Pandemic Legion and Test are back in their bro pack. Um, there is a, there are several comments about it in, in several different forums, as well as a battle report showing them working together. So we'll link that, and I'm sure we'll see lots of fun comedy ops and comedy fleets out of them. So be on the lookout. Moving into CCP news, Escalation is arriving this Tuesday. Now, what is Escalation? Escalation is what is leading up to Inferno, and Escalation is just that, an Escalation. There's a lot of changes in this patch, and the patch notes are really something you should look at on your own. There's also a feature page up. I'll be linking both, uh, but just a couple of highlights. Um, in the UI, there's a new, there's going to be a new display for eWar affecting you. So if somebody has webs, scrams, whatever the case may be, it will pop up right above your um, your F1 keys. So that's going to be great. Also, Control C copying will be available for most in-game in table scrolls. So you can copy your wallet and paste it into Excel and. They just made it a little, poor, a little bit more like spreadsheets online, it seems. But hey, it's going to be useful. Also, the corp icon is going to finally be part of the standard Neocom. So yay! Why was that taken away in the first place? It's okay. We love you, UI team. Uh, the first phases of Crime Watch are also going to go to effect. You just have to read that on yourself. There's a lot of changes, including how um, looting rights are going to work and uh, how setting someone plus 10 isn't going to necessarily give them looting rights anymore. So just check that out because some of you ninja looters will definitely be affected by that. Um, the Titan adjustments are also going to come in on this patch. So um, you're going to have a lo max lock of three targets, XL turret, SIG. Uh, resolution is going to be reduced to 2,000 meters and there's also going to be changes to capital turrets as well as the removal of the tracking penalty for siege modules. Uh, following that there will be lots of changes to incursions so watch out for your is per hour and including how including the uh, rewards for vanguards as well as changes in trigger spawns. So that's going to all be kind of evened out. Um, all of the drone region changes will be happening in this patch too. So two things are going to be happening. One, common rogue drones will no longer have alloys. They will be bounty now. So watch out for the mineral prices on the market. They've already been going crazy. I'm sure you've seen it yourself if you're into industry or anything like that. Uh, the other thing that will be happening is that all of the rogue drone areas will be receiving an adjustment to their security status in order to, you know, make sure all the bounties will, will line up and all that stuff. So, uh, hopefully IRC and the other drone regions entities will be okay. You know, hopefully you stocked up for this winter. <laughs> um, also... Meta Zero items will be replaced with scrap metal, so hopefully that will be a great boost to all you T1 manufacturers out there. Uh, good luck to that. And there are a host of other features and fixes going to this patch. Again, you should read these patch notes. And along with the patch notes, there have been several dev blogs that have been released by CCP. Um, CCP uh, Kakur has released two of them. One of them is e-awareness for deep 
Buffalo Soldiers. So definitely check that out. That's going to be uh, detailing how the new E-War display will work. And also you and I are little improvements together uh, version 2. So definitely check those out. And there's also a YouTube video that John Lander did. It was actually a couple of weeks ago, but we didn't have a podcast last week. But I will be linking that as well. Definitely check it out. Moving into community news, two quick pieces of news. First up, Hulkageddon is right on the horizon. Um, all of the information will be available at machine9.net, the website ran by Helicity Boson. He already has the prize list up and he is still accepting donations. So please send in. Um, Voices from the Void has made a donation and definitely good luck to all of those pilots out there. Also, I have a quick question. There was a ganker getting last year. Does anybody know if that's still going on? I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't heard anything from that player. I definitely hope it does. It added a great element last year, and, and that F element should definitely be concluded, especially since Hulkageddon will be kicking off with the CFC's Vern Jita and uh, more tiers as well as noir mercenaries have um, decided to defend Jita. So... You know, why not kick both events off? It sounds like a great thing. And, you know, that's what the EVE metagame is all about. Those great epic battles. And I will be there, and I hope you will be there, too. Uh, one, la Our last thing, test, as always, the propaganda. <laughs> you guys do such a great job. Um, check out this new test video. It is absolutely amazing. The music's great. The, the look and the feel of it's great. Um, a lot of hard work and effort went into that. So please definitely check that out. And that is it for Voices News. Again, this is just a small portion of the Voices from the Void podcast available at VoicesFromTheVoid.net. I really hope you check out the podcast. A lot of hard work and effort goes into that too, as well as these videos. So, you know, check it out. There's a lot of good stuff in there. And this week, uh, we are featuring an interview with Cow Warrior, who is one of my court mates, who also happens to run his very own 11 man gate camp. So, again, check that out, voicesfromthevoid.net. And I will see you all next week. Ciao.